Yo, yo, what it do, folks? It is BQ. It is the Impact Lounge. Doing this video a little bit late, but I did want to talk about the last Chancery event that they did on Twitch. Now, my boy Charles is going to be reviewing One Night Only in Twitch going forward here on the channel. But I wanted to kick things off real proper like I do it myself um, on this very first one and just talk about my general thoughts on the show. I'm not going to go real deep or real in depth to everything. You know, these are house shows. But I wanted to talk about it in general. I hope you guys are watching the one night onlys and the Twitches because as I've said before, it's like getting a second show. Now with these Twitch and one night only events, they're not they're not on par with Impact. They're house shows. And I'm going to say this because, and it's not offense to anybody who is listening right now. When I'm watching these Twitch shows in the chat room, I'm tired of people talking about the camera angles and the quality and all that. I'm not saying you can't have an opinion on that. You can. But this is what I want to say to you folks. This is a house show. This is being streamed on Twitch. They are not bringing the camera crew from Orlando or Tennessee, wherever they're based out of. Logistically, it makes no sense to do that. It's a house show. Now, granted, the Brace for Impact show had some horrendous angles. I've seen some improvements now. Last Chancery was a lot better. The One Night Only show was a lot better. But when you're watching this, folks, you're not watching Impact. Enjoy it for what it is. And enjoy it as a second show and extra content. And I really hope we start getting these Twitch numbers up. They have 25,000 subscribers. However, when we when they stream an event, it's about 2,000 live viewers and then about 5,000 on demand. So I really hope we start seeing those numbers double here pretty soon. Anyway, last chancery. Opening match was Tyson Dukes and Braxton Stutter. Braxton cut a really good heel promo to kick, kick the whole thing off. Match was a little slow for my taste. Tyson Dukes gets the win with the Boston Crab. Now, I'm not familiar with his current moveset or even his moveset with Impact. I, I don't remember. He um, They called it the Canadian Crab. I don't know if the Boston Crab is one of his moves. He wins via tap out. Um, Braxton Sutter taps out to the Boston Crab. I have not seen anyone tap out to the Boston Crab in years. I don't even think Chris Jericho wins with the Boston Crab. So I just found that really awkward. But Braxton loses, and I guess part of the gimmick, he cut a heel promo later about, damn, I, you know, I lost again. And it kind of seems like losing may be part of the gimmick and part of what ultimately gives him that attitude change. But I, I don't really, I don't really care for the losing. I'm a Braxton guy. I wish when he got, even when he started turning heel and he had the match with Garza Jr. on Impact, like he still lost and I didn't see any creative reason for him to lose that match. So uh, we'll see what happens with Braxton going forward. Desi Hit Squad versus Cody Diener and Jake Something. Now Jake Something was uh, Cousin Jake in this. Hakeem Zane and Jake Something wrestle locally here a lot. Real talented. They actually headlined a show just last weekend. Um, Jake Something is the Crown of Glory champion here and they were the main event and had a really good match. I'm liking the Desi Hit Squad so far, but I'm very confused with the presentation. It's very confusing. And I think they would tell you the same thing if one of them was sitting here right next to me right now. It's supposed to be a stable of four guys with a manager. You know, I'm not getting into the names. I'm just I'm just trying to speak in generalizations. Four guys and a manager. We know that's what it is, and it's always been the two guys on these events, and then Rohi Raju by himself on Impact with no explanation and the, and the crowd, the fans there at the Impact Zone have no idea what's going on with him. So I think they're debuting these guys the wrong way. This was an okay tag match. The uh, Diener and, and Jake something seemed pretty over with the crowd. But it was okay. I enjoy, I enjoy watching these guys, but I think they're still feeling these guys out on what they need them to be, want them to be. But there were some good heel spots and everything. Look forward to more from the Desi Hit Squad. X Division four-way match was Idris Abraham, Petey Williams, Phil Alice, and Brett Banks. A lot of people were calling for Brent Banks to be in addition to the X Division. And a lot of the reason I said, guys, watch this. I hope you're watching this stuff is because this is our NXT, like I said. These, these house shows, these are people we're going to see in the future on Impact. So get to know them now. 
Phil Atlas, we saw him on Explosion. I think it was against Congo Kong. Idris Abraham, I don't think we've seen, I've said this before, I don't think we've seen what he can do yet. And last time we saw him on Impact was the Super X Cup and PD Williams. This match, I guess for what it was, was good. However, for me as a viewer, I just knew PD Williams was going to win with the Canadian Destroyer when it was all said and done. You just knew that was going to be the outcome. And this was a long match. It was 16 minutes long. And for me, it was 16 minutes of saying, when are we going to see the Canadian Destroyer? You know, I already knew the end of the match. So it made the match excruciatingly long for me. Trevor Lee and Tr Josh Alexander. This match was okay. Again, didn't really get to that next gear. I'm not the world's biggest Trevor Lee fan. I find him entertaining, but I don't really... Uh, I, I, I'm not really checking for him in the ring. I, I, I'm gonna be. I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm not a huge fan. Josh Alexander, however, I like quite a bit. His gimmick is kind of like a collegiate wrestler, amateur wrestler. He stood out to me as one of my favorite guys on this show. I made sure to follow him on Twitter right away. Him, I like a lot. I don't know if that gimmick could work on television, but for this uh, independent stuff, I think I, I, I can dig it. Trevor Lee gets the win with the double stomp. Again, that's what I knew the outcome was going to be. And for the most part, you kind of know the outcomes of these matches. Eli Drake versus Marcus Burke. Eli Drake does get the win here. This was probably one of the better matches. But again, a little slow for my taste. None of these matches really got in a second gear. Um, they just It just kind of remained at the same pace the entire time. But it was probably one of the better ones. Eli Drake's been working really good with these indie guys. And they've had him in the mid card for all these house shows. He's never in, in the world, the main event scene at all. But he's doing what's asked of him and doing an outstanding job of it. Moose versus Alberto El Patron. This was the one match I didn't really care for. It's painfully obvious to me that they're going to feud these guys on Impact soon. Now they wrestled on Impact in a in a indie event. They wrestled here and then they wrestled big time wrestling um, for the. Uh, I don't know if it's for the, I don't think it's for the Cali Combat Show. I think it was the night before. I think they're seeing what these guys can do together. Alberto comes down doing the babyface gimmick, getting the crowd worked up, and I, I don't get it. I don't understand. If he's supposed to be a heel, why does he do all that? I think it was I don't think it was this event. I've been watching so much they all kind of run into each other. He came out through the crowd. I think it was uh, I think it was the one I'd only show. I don't get it. So it's really hard for me to buy into him as a heel. The match for the most part was pretty flat. I have nothing really <laughs> to say about it other than Alberto won with the double stomp, which is the worst finisher in wrestling history. And I'm not really looking forward to a feud between those guys. I love Moose. And I put Alberto over when I think he does good. I'm just not, I'm not looking forward to these guys. Allie versus Casey Spinelli. This one I liked because I love both girls. Casey Spinelli turned her heel gimmick up a couple notches. I wish we could have seen that on Impact. The match itself was good. But I had a hard time getting over the commentary on this one. All over the place. First of all, the ring announcer announces this as a match for the Knockouts Championship. Allie doesn't even have the belt with her. At least not that I saw. I don't believe she had it. He says it's for the Knockouts Championship. Josh says this is a, a non-title match. And if Casey Spinelli wins, she can get a future title shot. Alludes to the fact that she's a knockout. Then later says she's not a knockout. And that if she can get a, the victory, then maybe she'll be a knockout. And then when she loses the match, he says, I guess she'll have to find another way to secure that impact contract. I don't know what the hell's going on with her. I've talked to a couple knockouts on the roster. They don't know either. I'll put it like that. I really hope they bring her on because I think she's great. I don't think she could ever work the top of the card. But I think she's good. And she can if she can be the heel that she was here on the show, then I think they got something special on their hands. This being said, Josh also says, I said this was all over the place, right? You know, Allie's going to be looking for the Allie Valley driver to win this match. Allie wins with the super kick. Allie always has used the super kick. She just couldn't use it because James Storm was. Now she's back to the super kick. So you're putting over a finisher that she doesn't even really use anymore. And I'm sure she's going to use it to an extent. But to say, you know, she's looking for the Allie, Allie Valley driver wins with a super kick. 
I just thought the commentary was all over the place on this. And there was actually one other, um, one other thing that stood out to me. I don't remember it off the bat, but that kind of took me out of the match. But the match itself was good. Casey Spinelli missed a moonsault at the very end. So she, she can, she can do some stuff in the ring. Main event was Austin Aries versus Congo Kong versus Matt Seidel. Now Congo Kong was the, is the BCW champion. Matt Seidel here was the X division champion. He had the mask and this was before he got it on impact and, uh, Austin Aries world champion. So this is a world title match. Three guys that uh, I think are going to be in the world of world title scene, main event scene for the foreseeable future. But the match itself was just decent. Why do I say that? Well, there was a lot of one-on-one action with one guy outside of the ring. You know, it was kind of hard to get into this as a triple threat. And we're at a point where the crowd doesn't really understand what's going on with Matt Seidel either yet. Like now this just this past episode of Impact, he started wrestling as a heel, the match versus Austin Aries. Other than that, he's still been so tweener borderline. But everybody worked hard in the match. The finish itself, now this this is hard because all three of these guys are champions, so a, a champion has to eat the pinfall. I don't know how I would have booked it. I don't know who I would have booked losing this, but I didn't like Congo Kong losing. I think I I think I just didn't like the manner in which he lost. So he gets um, he catches a shooting star press. Austin Aries drags him out of the ring. Four fifty splash. So made Congo Kong look very vulnerable. Jimmy Jacobs cut a pretty good promo beforehand. Um, it, it fell really flat though. He was looking for booze and everything. And this is this is my whole thing. Wrestling heels just don't really get booed anymore. People are saying, well, why is it so? quiet when Sue Young was out there. Well, they're not going to cheer her. They're not going to cheer Congo Kong. But that that heat just doesn't exist anymore. And it's very hard to boo the heels. So a lot of the times, the heels get crickets. You know, um, I, I blame it on the cool heel era. I blame it on, uh, you know, the, uh, a lot of the ROH style of wrestling, some of the indie style of wrestling, the Bullet Club stuff. Like in the cool heel era, it, it's ruined things for heels. But Austin Aries does win the match and uh, still your champion. So an episode of Impact, I'm always, you know, on average, it's probably about a 7 out of 10. These Twitch shows are about a 6 out of 10 if you can get around the camera angles and everything. But again, guys, house shows, house show cameramen, house show angles, house show lighting. That's how it's going to be. Just enjoy product, enjoy the content. And when they put this stuff out, definitely check it out. I liked the last one night only event a lot better than this, but this was cool. It was solid, better than what I saw with Brace Brace for Impact, and I didn't see all of Brace for Impact yet, but this one was better. It just wasn't as good as um, the one night only show. The, the March breakdown is probably the best show they put on so far in the new era. So I tried to get through that really quick. It's very hard to um, to review these because there's not they're not really storyline. But I just want to give my general thoughts on them and hope that you guys will will check it out. Even if I say, hey, it's a 6 out of 10, you know, that's not a bad thing for what they are. Thanks for listening. Hit the subscribe button and I'm out. Peace.